Welcome to section two of Methods 2009 paper. We're up to question two now, and we're going to get straight into it. My name is Abe, and we're going to try to do this in as little time as you can, because it's an exam. Yeah. So anyway, question two is about a cubic of sorts. They've given you a mountain valley type thing, whatever. It's okay. We can read the question, and essentially. They want to find the equation of our curve. Great. So um, it's modeled by a cubic where you have to find the equation, and it says it's given you some curves, and you have to write down some simultaneous equations. Really, not too bad, actually, not too bad. Now, look at the information that they've given us. Firstly, we know it's a cubic, a positive cubic because of the shape. Secondly, we see that it's it's got a form. Right, y equals 1 on 200, x cubed plus bx squared plus c. And look at the conditions. The curve goes through some point, you get a gradient, and also you get told a turning point. First thing I'm going to say is, before writing anything down, why don't we just write down the derivative of y? We're going to need it, won't we? If we're writing down simultaneous equations to do with the gradient and turning points and stuff like that. Y is moved to write down the derivative. And we all know the derivative is not very hard anyway. dy dx is 1 on 200 3ax squared plus 2bx. Great. Okay, let's get cracking then. Three conditions. You want three equations, right? For a, b, c. The first thing is first equation is obviously going to go through the first little clue. So the curve passes through the point n, which is 2, 0. So you know that at x equals 2, y equals 0. Write that down. First equation, y, x equals 2, y equals 0, right? 0 equals 1 on 200. Now at x equals 2, you can sub in x as 2, you get 8a plus 4b plus c. There's your first equation. Easy, isn't it? On to the second one. On the second one comes from the gradient of the curve n is negative 0 0.06. So basically you're saying, great, um, at x equals 2, right, because remember this is the same point as before, so the point n, at x equals 2, dy dx equals negative 0 0.06. So you're right, okay, negative 0 0.06 equals, sub in x equals 2 into dy dx, you're going to get 12a plus 4b. That is your second equation. Apologies for blocking that, but I was writing behind that window. 3. Okay, the third one says that there is a turning point at x equals 4. What does that mean? It means that there is that dy dx equals 0 at x equals 4. So, again, 0 equals 1 on 200, and you sub in x equals 4 this time. So you'll get 3 times a times 4 squared, 3 times 16, you'll get 48a, plus 2b times 4, 8 there it is, three simultaneous equations. What to look out for? They've given you three clues, there's three equations. They've set things up quite nicely for you. Hard to get tricked, really. Okay. Second part, hence show. Hence show. A equals one, B equals negative six, C equals 16. Okay, so basically they're gonna ask you to solve these equations. Easy way and hard way. The easy way would be Use a matrix, put it into your calculator. The hard way would go manually. So, let's use a matrix. Let's use a matrix. Um, before I do, though, I want to do something that will make life simple. I'm going to multiply everything by 200. And I want to do that because, frankly, 1 on 200 is hard to work with. And also, negative 0 0.06 looks better when you've multiplied it by 200. So, 
let's um, go ahead with that and we're going to set up our matrix so you know how this is going to go, it's going to be a 3x3 three three matrix you're going to have A, B, C here and it's going to equal stuff, right? and okay and remember we've multiplied stuff by 200 now so you can sort of forget about that, that, and that and negative 0 0.06 is actually going to be what is it when you multiply by 200? 12. 12. There. Makes life easy. Okay, the first one is 8a plus 4b plus c. 8a plus 4b plus 1c. Right? We all remember how matrix multiplication works. The second one is 12a plus 4b. 12a plus 4b plus 0c. The third one is 48a plus 8b. 48 plus 8b plus 0c and it equals, what's it equal? 0, 12, 0 that's enough information, right? so you know from this you can do sorry, this part's actually not related to that part at all you know that abc is the same as so actually in your work and you probably don't even need to write this part down but you know that you would have to invert this matrix and then multiply by that, that by 0, 12, 0 to get the answer and you'll find that A, B, C is going to equal whatever it equals in the question 1 minus 6, 16 don't worry I checked it, it does 1 minus 6, 16 winner there you go. Part B out of the way. Not particularly difficult if you know how to use matrices. Oops, that's not part B, sorry. Got ahead of ourselves. That's A part 1 and A part 2. Sorry to get you excited. Alright, so now we're on to part B properly. Part B says, what is it asking us? Part B goes, find exact values for the coordinates of M and P. Look down at the number of marks. 2, 1, 1. Meaning what? Meaning, you don't need to give much working, really. The coordinates of M and P. Okay? So you know that M is one of the intercepts. P is another intercept. So basically it's asking you to find the other, the other intercepts aside from n. And you will see when you put this into your calculators that p is, sorry, not equal, p 2 minus 2 root 3 0 and m is 2 plus 2 root 3 0 plus. Yeah. That's all you need to do. Really simple. Three marks there, really. Okay. The second part of B. The length of the tunnel. Okay, come back up to the diagram. Look at what they've designated the tunnel. The tunnel is obviously from N to P. Right? So if you want to find that, you can sort of go, okay, L. They ask us for L. They probably did. Okay, no. I'm going to call it L. Alright? L is what? Top value minus bottom value. Or the rightermost value minus the left value. N minus P. N is 2 minus P. 2 minus 2 root 3. Oh, sorry. 2 minus 2 minus 2 root 3 gives you 2 root 3. 2 root 3 what? Kilometers. Looking along here, you'll see that in the question somewhere, all the measurements are given in kilometers. So it is very clever for us to write 2 root 3 kilometers at the end of this. Great. Part 3. Part 3 asks us, 
the maximum depth of the valley below the train track. Okay, so we come back up to our diagram and we say, okay, we see that what we see where the valley is, and you want to find well, the coordinate of f at the turning point, right? And do you know the turning point? Oh, yes, you do. It was told in part A. Turning point at x equals 4, right? So that's x equals 4. Great. So basically, you say, okay, well, f of 4, stick that in your calculator, you're going to get 0 0.08. And that's 0 0.08 kilometers. If you're very nice, you can say 80 meters. There. Great, isn't it? Great, isn't it? Part B, also out of the way. Okay. Now the next part of this question starts getting ridiculous. You're driving a train along a straight track under a polynomial mountain, and then you come out of the tunnel and suddenly you have mad vision and you can see 6.2 kilometers in the distance to a large rock. Yeah. And so, naturally, you put on the brakes and then stuff goes on. Let's look at what happens. It goes, well, we're coming out of the tunnel and we start braking, right? And you get some kind of relation between the speed versus distance distance. What's the distance? Distance of the front of the train from P. Remember P, if you come back up to the diagram again, P is where the mountain ends, where you come out of the tunnel. Point P. So, okay, that's great. And part C basically asks us, okay, find the value of K in terms of W. So let's investigate this a little further. This is part C. So you want to find K in terms of W, where W is its initial speed. Let's write things down when we're not very clear. V equals K, log to the base E, D plus 1 over 7. Great. Okay. How do you start? Well, first thing you want to do is notice, or well, the first thing you see is that actually W doesn't appear in that equation. It's not good. Get W in there. So W is the initial speed. Initial speed. Initial meaning what? The point at the time, the point of time where the train comes out of the tunnel at point P. Right? So, you know that at D equals zero, because that's sort of our initial time when the train comes out of the tunnel. D equals zero, right? Because it's right at the mouth of the tunnel. V equals W. That's what the question says. It says the initial speed is W. So, V equals W when D equals zero. Yeah? Why don't we stick that in and see what happens? So, put W in there. W equals K log to the base E. Now, D is 0, so you get 1 on 7. Yeah? Great. That seems to be alright. Relates W and K. You want to find K in terms of W. So, move things around. Move it around. What can you get? You get... When you swap K and W, really... And you can do k equals w over log to the base e, 1 on 7. The more astute among you will notice that actually you can take out... 1 on 7 is 7 to the power of negative 1. You can take out the power and actually get k equals negative w over log to the base e, 7. Now, I've been told that the assessors are okay with both. So don't beat yourself up if you didn't get the second part. Great. C out of the way. Bit of work for one mark, actually. 
given that you have to relate something and then work it out and stuff. But that's all right. On to D. So you're given some value of V, and it looks super complex, and you hope that the reason it's super complex is because the answer is going to work out really nicely when you put it in. When Okay, so you get V when D equals 2.5. Find the value of W. Let's do that. So, remember that our relationship now between V and D, now that we know what K is, looks like this. So you know that V equals negative W on log to the base E7 log to the base E D plus 1 over 7, like so. Okay, so that's our equation for V. Great. So you sub things in, right? You sub in V equals this big expression when D equals 2.5. Good. So, 120 log to the base E of 2 over log to the base E of 7 equal to negative W log to the base E of 7. Oh, look, it's going to be cancellation action. Type log. Now, D plus 1. D is 2.5. 3.5 over 7. Okay, let's see what we can cancel. Cancel the 7s. Mm, leave it at that for now. Look what else we can do. We can, we can see that 120 log to the base C2 equals negative W log, now 3.5 on 7 is half, isn't it? Now, what you can do is recognize that half is 2 to the power of negative 1. Take out the negative 1 and you'll get W log Two. Ooh, look. Do you see? 120 log E2 is equal to W log E2. Thus, W equals 120. Magic. Yeah. Okay. Really, really good. Really good stuff. Okay. So that's D out of the way, right? You just wanted to find the value of W. Great. Last part of the question. Find the exact distance from the front of the train to the large rock when the train finally stops. Okay. So putting things together. Let's do it. E. Okay. So basically... You want to know what happens when the train stops, right? So basically you want to find D when V equals 0, don't you? Find D when V equals 0. I'll use a smaller pen. And remember that we found W in the last step, that W is 120, so V equals 120 over log to the base E7, log to the base E, D plus 1 over 7, like that. Okay, solve for V equals 0. 0 equals this whole lot. Okay, great. Looks hard, but it's not hard. Tell you what. You've got 120 over log E7, which is a constant, so that part can't equal 0. So you need log of D plus 1 over 7 to equal 0. Now, log of what equals 0? From your basic log laws, you'll know that log, not only to the base E, log to the base E, base of anything. Base 1 is equal to 0. Because, remember, anything to the power of 0 is 1. That's like the same rule altogether. So... Four dots. That's meant to be three dots. D plus one over seven equals one. 
D equals 6. We've just solved for D. Great. What do we want? Exact distance from the front of the train to the large rock when the tra train finally stops. The first thing to realize is that D is in kilometers. The second thing to realize is that D is not your final answer. Look back. So, train stops at D equals 6, right? Look back to the top. Oh, sorry, not the top, quite. Okay. Look back here. You see that the driver has, this, has a large rock how far along? 6.2 kilometers from P. 6.2 kilometers from P, right? D is 6 kilometers. Remember that D is the distance from the point, from point P, which is where you got out of the tunnel. So you just go, okay, rock is 6.2 kilometers away, therefore, distance from train to rock is 6.2 minus 6 equals 0 0.2 kilometers or 200 meters. There you go. Question 2 out of the way. Thank you. Get on to question 3 in the next video.